Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I've got a nutrition topic for you guys, and we are gonna be talking all about cooking oils. If you guys are new around here, my name is Becca. I am a registered dietitian, and I make tons of videos here on my YouTube channel about nutrition, wellness, intuitive eating, a little bit of motherhood, and a lifestyle. But like I said, this video is gonna be all about cooking oils. So I'm gonna share with you guys my top three favorite cooking oils. These are ones that I always keep stocked in our kitchen or in my uh, kitchen cabinets, I guess. I don't have a pantry, I wish I did, um, but that's a total sidebar. First, I'm actually gonna talk to you a little bit about the cooking oils that I tend to avoid or at least try to um, when it comes to my diet and you know my family's diet um, and also why that is. Okay, so let's just dive right in. I'm first gonna be talking about the oils that I typically like to avoid at least as far as stocking my kitchen to use for cooking. So when you walk down the aisle in the grocery store and you are confronted with like 5,000 different choices. There are so many oils that we can choose from and there are definitely certain ones that I personally like to avoid and that is usually like the vegetable oils. So whether it's just straight up like vegetable oil, which is actually like a blend of different oils or canola oil, um, soybean oil, corn oil, these kinds of oils unfortunately are super processed for the most part, um, and that is why I typically like to avoid them. And when I say highly processed, I basically mean those oils have been subjected to all different kinds of chemicals, chemical processing, potentially even high heat. Usually solvents are used to extract the oil, deodorizers are used, neutralizers are used, bleach can even be used, because when you're looking at all of those bottles, you see that they're all perfectly the exact same color, the exact same consistency, and they're basically all identical, and that you know, comes with some chemical processing in order to ensure that you get the exact same final end product. So I mentioned solvents. So usually solvents are one of the ways, um, the cheapest way for manufacturers to actually extract oils um, that, you know, then becomes your cooking oil. And hexane is the chemical that is most commonly used for this. And hexane, there can actually be like leftover hexane in the oil that you end up, you know, consuming and cooking with, which is not good. And then another thing that I mentioned is the high heat that can be used. So there's kind of this weird catch-22 with vegetable oils because, you know, we hear that they are full of polyunsaturated fats, which are, you know, can be really good for heart health. However, polyunsaturated fatty acids are very um, weak and when subjected to high heat, they will very, very easily break down and oxidize. So what happens when we have fatty acids that oxidize, we end up getting a ton of free radicals. If you guys have not watched my uh, Nutrition 101 on antioxidants video, I highly recommend going to watch that so you can totally understand what exactly free radicals are, they're you know these reactive oxygen species, what exactly they do to our body, why we want to keep our free radical levels in our body to a minimum. Um, they really can be very, very destructive and we want to avoid them as much as possible and consume lots of foods that are going to help us combat free radicals. So basically this is like a roundabout way of saying if we're consuming these oils with all of these heart healthy polyunsaturated fats, but if all of the, those fats have been subjected to really high heat and they've already oxidized and broken down, we're basically just taking in a lot of free radicals where we should have been taking in, you know, these good fats. So that is not good for heart health or any, you know, body system health. We do not want to be consuming a ton of free radicals. So it's, while it has a good intention, it doesn't actually follow through um, in theory. And we, they're basically just broken up fats in these oils and it's not very good for us to be consuming those. Also, another thing to mention, typically these oils are from, you know, GMO crops. So if you're someone who really likes to be wary of your, you know, GMO intake or completely avoid them whatsoever, these are definitely oils you're going to want to be cautious of because typically, um, whether it's canola or coin or corn or soybean or anything like that, they are usually always from GMOs. Now, the thing with these cooking oils is, unfortunately, they are in a lot of our, like, packaged food products, even if it's, like, an organic um, simple ingredient type packaged food product, a lot of times these oils will still be included, which is kind of a bummer, right? We don't really want to be consuming these oils. Now, where I come in with my opinion, you guys know I am very balanced when it comes to food and diet. Um, I'm anti-extreme anything pretty much. So 
Personally, I like to be conscious of, you know, I like to look at ingredients always and see what, you know, exactly I'm bringing into my body. And I am wary of those oils. Do I still eat packaged food products that do contain maybe some soybean oil or canola oil or things like that? Yeah, I do. Um, in a perfect world, I wouldn't, but that is just kind of what, what it is. That's the nature of our food system right now. That's what's available. So would I say you need to inspect every single food and never consume one that has it? Personally, I wouldn't. Um, that is up to you, but like I said, I always like to come from a balanced approach. I don't like to turn food into something that is bad. Um, I just see those oils as not the best. It's something I definitely want to be conscious of. Maybe I'll choose not to eat a certain food if I don't really want it that bad and it has that oil in there, but I don't think it's something to go crazy about, but I definitely think when it comes to cooking oils, there are so many better alternatives and there's really no reason for you to be stocking those in your kitchen to use for cooking. And then one more quick thing I wanted to mention, especially when talking about um, these vegetable oils added into food products, a lot of times we'll see something called like high oleic, like sunflower oil. So high oleic, basically um, they are crossbreeding the like sunflowers in order to create an end product, an oil that is much higher in monounsaturated fats versus the polyunsaturated fats. And monounsaturated fats are more stable um, and therefore they're not as going to break down as readily and oxidize and have all those free radicals in there. However, so that's better, um, they're, you know, they can handle heat a little bit better, um, especially with cooking too, because we're applying heat to oils when cooking and the same exact thing can happen, they can oxidize, which we'll kind of get to that in a minute. but. You also still don't know exactly how those oils are processed. We still don't know if they're using hexane um, in order to extract the oil. We're just, you're not always sure. So again, they're not, just because it's high oleic and they have more monounsaturated fats doesn't necessarily mean that they're like a perfect choice. And it's still something that I am like, somewhat conscious of. Now I'm going to be sharing my top three picks, what I like to use and what I stock in my kitchen with you guys in just a minute, but I did just want to explain one more thing really quickly when it comes to cooking oils, um, like processing in general. So as I mentioned earlier, using the chemical hexane to extract oils is a really popular way to extract oil from different, um, you know, plants and crops. And it's the cheapest way, um, of course, <laughs> but there are a couple other ways as well. So the next one is expeller pressed, which means that whatever, if it's, you know, sunflower seeds or whatever, um, they're actually pressing the seeds in order to extract the oil instead of using a chemical to draw the oil out. So this is definitely um, a, a step in the right direction. Unfortunately, there still can be a lot of heat involved in this process. It's kind of hard to know. So it's maybe not the gold standard or the best. Um, process in order to extract oils and um, for them to you know maintain their integrity as far as their um, fatty acid so when you press in order to extract oil you don't get quite as much oil as you would when you use chemicals to extract so this process is a little more expensive for manufacturers which is why you'll see probably the cheapest oil on the shelves are not expeller pressed oils and then the last way which is definitely the most desirable is through cold pressing so again it's still pressing to extract um, oil instead of using chemicals but it is all done completely cold there's no heat that is applied and this is the best because heat like i said a it can break down fatty acids and they can oxidize but it can also break down, uh, break down other things, um, you know, nutrients within the oil as well. So by cold pressing, we're extracting the oil without, um, you know, messing with any of the properties or the benefits and especially the fatty acids within that oil. Okay, so now on to my picks and I'm gonna go over a little bit of why I like to use them um, and what exactly I like to use them for. So my number one top pick, this is the oil that I use the most in my kitchen personally, and that is avocado oil. So the reason I love avocado oil and probably use it the most is because it has a crazy or it can have a crazy high smoke point so smoke point you can look you can google smoke point of any oil if you want to check out and see like which ones you already have at home to try and figure out what they'd be best for but a smoke point is essentially the temperature at which the fats will begin to oxidize in that oil so if you're using or if you're using um, high heat cooking methods so for example sauteing or frying, um, roasting, any of those where we're using really high heat, you wanna make sure you're using an oil that has a very high smoke point so that you're not you know, creating that same process 
we're trying to avoid that the manufacturers can do with high heat when you know processing and extracting um, the oil we want to make sure when we're cooking it we're not heating it to such a high level that the same thing is going to happen and we're going to end up with free radicals so avocado oil is definitely my top pick and what I use the most and the smoke point um, can be up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit which is crazy high pretty much anything you're going to be doing in your kitchen avocado oil is a good choice and it also has basically no taste so I even use it in baking I mean I literally use it for every Thing. It is such a great staple to have on hand. Okay, next up is coconut oil. So coconut oil also has um, a decently high smoke point, not quite as high um, as the up to 500 uh, with avocado oil, but the smoke point for coconut oil is about, about 350 degrees. So again, a lot of the things that you're doing in your kitchen, um, potentially baking, sauteing, things like that. Coconut oil can be a really good choice. I also just really love the spray coconut oil because it's so easy. Um, and if I'm roasting it, not like extremely high temperatures, like 400 or something like that, it can be a really great choice. That's probably when I personally use coconut oil the most because I tend to use avocado oil the most. Uh, but also sometimes I just really like the flavor of coconut oil and I will choose that over the avocado. And then certain recipes call, like baking recipes, will call for coconut oil. So I always like to have that on hand as well. Okay, last but certainly not least is extra virgin olive oil. So this is also a great one to have on hand. The smoke point on this oil is a little bit lower than um, olive oil. It's around 320 degrees. So again, this is not really one you want to be reaching for for that high heat cooking, any kind of sauteing or pan frying or even roasting. This is more reserved for things that you're not really going to be heating up. So using it um, in any kind of like salad dressings or if you're using it in you know, different recipes that are just gonna remain cold. Olive oil is a great option, and also it has like a really like lovely olive um, robust flavor that can add like a lot of um, just, just really tasty, and it can add a lot to a certain dish. But again, it's not gonna be our favorite pick when it comes to high heat cooking because we really don't want it oxidizing um, and breaking down and giving us free radicals. And then one thing I want to add to the extra virgin olive oil conversation, there is this thing called like olive oil fraud. You guys can Google it. It's kind of crazy, but it's basically where sometimes um, if you get like cheaper, you know, olive oils, they often have like other vegetable oils mixed in there and it's not actually pure like cold pressed olive oil, even if the label says that. So always just kind of keep a lookout. I like to purchase like high quality, um, like, you know, just better quality olive oils for that reason, just to hopefully not run into that situation. But I just wanted to mention that because I feel like not a lot of people know that. And I mean, if you're paying for olive oil, you want to get olive oil, right? And you don't want all that oxidized stuff. So those are my top three picks. The only other like cooking fat I typically use is grass-fed butter. I'm a huge fan of grass-fed butter and I use it a lot with cooking. Um, I would say that and avocado oil are probably what I use the most when it comes to any kind of cooking in the kitchen. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I know that this is a question that I've got um, a few times through the years. People want to know what the best cooking oils are. So that is what I personally like to use and why and everything I kind of like to avoid and why. Um, so I hope that you guys found it helpful and you were able to learn something. If you guys still have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love to have you. And also you can follow me on Instagram where I'm just hanging out, you know, showing my daily life on there. I love hanging out with you guys on Instagram. So definitely come follow me there. Um, but yeah, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.